So for our week 4, we will discuss about Intermediate SQL. And ito yung mga topics na i-discuss natin for week 4. Join expressions, a little bit about views and transactions, more details about integrity constraints, data types and schemas, very light discussion about index definition in SQL and authorization. So for your pointers for review, we have join expressions, integrity constraints, and SQL data types and schemas. Before we start with join operations, let us recall the basic set operations, uh, intersection, union, and set difference. So I'm showing here a simple example using set A and set B. The intersection of A and B is the element B. The union of set A and B are the elements A, B, and C. And the set difference between the two differs with respect to their position. So A minus B is the element A, and B minus A is the element C. Let, let us also recall about relational algebra definition of joint operation. Remember that the joint operation is defined by the Cartesian product of two relations, R and S, and then further filtering it with respect to some predicate own attributes. So let's define the join operation. The join operation takes two relations or two tables and return as a result another relation. So if you wanted to imagine this, basically you're combining two tables para magkaroon ka na lang ng isang table. Now, the problem with joining the two set of tables is that they have different set of values they have two different set of attributes as well. Note that the join operation are typically used as a subquery expression in the from clause. So we have select something something from a result of a join operation. So there are actually three types of joins here. We call the natural join, inner join, and then outer join. Let's start with the natural join. Natural join in SQL matches the records with the same values for all common attributes and retain only one copy of each common column. So this is similar to the union operation of set. Pero ang giniyo union natin dito is the set of all attributes from the two tables. And then... There's a typo from the original version of these slides. Instead of instructors, actually students and the course ID on. So the correct query is select name course ID from the Cartesian product of the two tables students takes such that we have a predicate that uh, student.id is equal to takes.id. Remember from the Cartesian product, we will produce m times n records. However, we will further filter all those records to the records that are satisfying the predicate, which is student.id equal to text.id. And then this long form is equivalent to the following. So instead of having a where statement we will only use uh, the special keyword natural join so this query is actually equivalent to the query below so meron tayong select name course id from the natural join between student and takes so a while ago we saw that we can join two tables but we can actually have multiple relations combined using natural joins but the idea here is that uh, we do it on a pairwise basis so um, the 
order should be from left to right. So R1 natural join R2 and then the result will then be uh, joined to the R sub 3 and so on up to R sub n. So for the natural join, just like the set operation, it is important to maintain the order. So if you change the order, um, there's a possibility that you can get a different query result with a different ordering of R sub i's. So for example, let us use the student relation in our previous example. Uh, what we have here is a set of attributes or column names. And the primary key here is yung ID. And then we have a set of attributes, ID name, department name, and then total credit. We will use this example later on. Next is the second table. This table is the text relation. Here we have attributes, ID, course ID, sec ID, semester, year, and then grade. As you can see, I have highlighted uh, here the ID because they have a common attribute called ID. So the rest, uh, iba na yung names. We will use this later on if we will discuss about natural joins. If we take student natural join takes, what happens is that we perform a Cartesian product of all the records of student and all the records of takes. And then we further filter it to those that have student.id equal to takes.id. And then tatanggalin na natin yung another ID from the takes.id because takes.id is equal to student.id. Notice that there is an arrangement of attributes. The first is uh, the set of attributes na common sa both tables and then followed by the first table and then the second table. So sometimes hindi lang isa yung common attribute ng dalawa. Okay. So there's a warning regarding the usage of natural join. Uh, because natural join uses the set of attributes that have the same um, attribute names. So, for example, dito, gumamit siya ng ID because student has an ID, takes has an ID. So, for example, I, if I have a name here in the uh, second table, gagamitin din niya yun sa natural join. And then, it needs to make sure na ID and name for both tables I the same. The problem with natural join is that it assumes that since they have the same attribute name, they're referring to the same value. One example that is given in the book is this. So we need to list the name of students along with the title of courses that they have taken. Uh, we have the correct version and then we have the incorrect version and then later on we will show the difference between the two. First is the main difference I student natural join takes. So it produces a table uh, from the join operation and then the resulting table from the student natural join takes I Cartesian product to the course. After doing so, we can specify this specific predicate. For the incorrect version, the difference is that uh, student natural join takes, so may resulting table yan, and then in a natural join niya ulit sa course. So the problem with this specific example is that the second version, which is the incorrect version, will omit some of the records na dapat na dun sa, uh, sa list natin. Why? Because of the use of some attributes name na dapat hindi maging equal because of the natural join. So, ang mangyayari daw ay 
may mga records or student name, course title pair na mawawala. Uh, at i-explain ko yan later on kung bakit mawawala yung mga yun. So, let's try to um, dig in a little deeper about this uh, three tables. So, kanina, we're just talking about takes and yung student na table. But then, uh, we have a new table called the course table. And then, for this table, uh, let us check the common attributes. So, if we look at takes and student, a while ago, we have a common column called the ID. And then, if we look at uh, the course, highlighted dito yung course ID because um, course and takes have a common ID called course ID. And then, we have a department name attribute in course and have a department name also in the student. So, if we will perform the natural join, it will utilize yung mga common attributes. Uh, first, if we will consider the incorrect query. So, since this is done from left to right or from top to bottom in this particular example, um, the first thing that we need to do is to get the natural join of student and takes. This natural join will actually utilize this common attribute ID. Tapos, it will produce a table na union of all the attributes, including uh, the ID, but yung column na ID ay isa na lang. Okay? So, after getting the natural join between student and takes, in a natural join niya ulit sa course, and this will be done by checking all the common attributes between the two tables. So, at this point, highlighted in green yung mga common attributes nila. We have the department name and we have the course ID. Uh, yung context of the department name in this table, itong department name dito, is the department name of the student. And then, this student with a specific department name takes this course. However, for our second uh, table, which is course, listed lang yung mga department name and yung course IDs that are part of the department. So, for example, computer science, so mga CS subjects lang, for biology, bi biology subjects lang. Pero, um, yung mga students na um, comsci, pero kumukuha ng, let's say, biology subject, na pwedeng tinatake naman nila legitimately dahil hindi sila common doon sa listahan ng mga courses, ang mangyari ay mawawala yung mga set of records na um, pair na hindi nag appear dito sa, sa catalog of courses. The next type of join is called the outer join. So, the outer join is an extension of the join operation that avoids loss of information. For this particular example, may mga some information tayo na nawawala because we are keeping all the records that is common to both of the relations. For outer join naman, we will be preserving some records na hindi necessarily nag appear dun sa isa pang table. So, the outer join computes the join and then adds tuples from one relation that does not match tuples in the other relation to the result of the join. So, sometimes since wala ang content yung other attributes, kumagamit siya ng null values. So, may mga different types of, din of outer join. May tinatawag na left outer join, right outer join, and then full outer join. So, later on, mas may graphical representation tayo of the different types of outer join. Okay, so let's give an example for the outer join. For the rest of the outer join examples, we will use these two tables the course table and the prereq table. So, for the course table, we have the course ID, we have the title, department name, and credits. And then, if we look at the attributes of prereq, we have course ID and then prereq ID. Mm, the common 
attribute between the two tables ay yung course ID. Okay, so to aid in the visualization, I highlighted the course blue and then I highlighted the prereq red. So all the courses in prereq are inside the circle the color red and then all the courses in the course table are inside the blue circle. So let's look at the different types of outer joints using course and prereq. Let's start with the left outer join. So if we do the course natural left outer join, resulting table is the following. And this table is primarily inside the blue circle because we have a left outer join so mas mayroon siyang bias towards the blue circle. So all the records inside the blue circle ay nandun mag appear sa resulting table. But of course, since 315 is missing in the prereq table, wala ka actually makukuha ang content about the prerequisite of 315. And so, kaya null yung content doon sa prereq ID ni CS. 315. For the right outer join, we have a bias naman on the prereq table. So, all the contents in the red circle, which is bio 301, CS 190, and CS 345 are included in the resulting table. And then, since CS 347 doesn't have any information about the course null yung content in the resulting table so we have null 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 in the title department name and credits for cs347 however for the full outer join for the full outer join wala naman siyang bias between the two but both okay for the full outer join all the records in the course and also in the prereq table is included in the resulting table. So what we have here is the union of all the records in the two. However, since we missing it, both in the um, join and both in the prereq table and in the course table, we have some subset of we have null contents on the CS347 and null contents on the 315 with respect to some attributes. So in the relation algebra, it is denoted using this specific notation. Okay. So as a summary, there are different join types and join operation. And we can also use several conditions. Uh, there are a combination of a join condition and join type and the combination of all those will produce different tables. So there are different types of join types. So there are different join types. Ito yung tinatawag na inner join which is almost synonymous to intersection. And then we have the left outer join, which is biased to the first relation. And then we have the right outer join, which is biased to the second relation. And then we have the full outer join, such that all the records in the first relation and the second relation is in the, the resulting table. We have the join conditions, and then these join conditions are the conditions used for merging the two tables so for the natural join condition it assumes na all attributes with the same attribute name are needed to be equal for the on naman it's a generalization for you to have specific condition on how to say that you will merge the two records into one and then 
we can also use the keyword using if we wanted to use a set of attributes for specifying that you will use this or merging so the combination of the different types of joins and the different join conditions will create different types of join operations given the two tables so let's show some examples the first example is this statement course natural right outer join prereq the two relations are course and prereq and then the join condition is natural and then the type of join is right outer join for this specific example we will show you how it was obtained so recall we have the course table we have the prereq table and then they have a common attribute course id from the common attribute course id we can actually generate a venn diagram out of this and we will use this to compute for the resulting table okay so since we will be using the right outer join we have a bias so all contents in the prereq table is in the resulting table so matatanggal dito si 315 347 is in prereq table pero wala siyang course information the content for the title department name and credit sa ifa sumal for the example number two naman for example number two we have course and prereq as the two relations we will be performing a full outer join so this is the join type uh, so ang magiget sa dyan ay lahat ng records in the course at yung prereq so the union of all the records using the course id so dito explicitly sinabi na ah, use course id dapat course id ni course is equal to course id ni prereq so um since we will we are utilizing the full outer join and using the course id as the common attribute uh, we will have several null values here both in the part of cs347 and the part of 315 and here are some other few examples um, suppose we wanted to compute for the inner join naman. we are so if we are using inner join we are referring to the intersection of the two sets. We use the on statement to specify any predicate. And in this case, the predicate is the course ID from the course should be equal to the course ID from the prereq table. So almost same lang yan actually yung ginagawa sa previous except we use the on statement. For the second example naman, we have the um, left outer join. So this one is bias sa course. So the course is the blue set. So we have the list of courses inside the blue circle. So we have bio 301-193-315. And then we also use the same condition which is course that id course id is equal to the course id from prereq from our lecture number four module i actually added an image for the cheat sheet so you can utilize this graphical representation to create a select uh, from where type of statement in this particular context, you will use SQL joins and the different keywords for SQL joins. So, 
the red one here is the intersection of the two set and then this is what we call the inner join and then yung mga naka yellow boxes naman uh, these are the full outer join so this one is the full outer join this is the uh, left join and this is the right join so if we want to, to invert the left join and the right join you can add or modify the condition so use the on, uh, on statement and then you can just update the predicate to be something with this format so this is derived from this this is derived from this and then this is derived from this The second part of this lecture is regarding the views. So you have an idea about views from lecture one, but um, let's dig in a little deeper. Uh, in some cases, uh, it is not desirable for all users to see the entire logical model of the, the database. So the whole schema, hindi niya kailangan malaman yun because um, probably because of some some rules in the uh, the enterprise or in the business so consider a person who needs to know only the instructor uh, name and the department but not the salary of the person although you have information about the person's salary so you can actually create a query wherein uh, it's just a project projection of the instructor relation using the id name and then department name so me tinanggal ka na one column which is the salary uh, this particular query uh, can be stored as a view or tinatawag na virtual relation so this view provides a mechanism to hide certain data from uh, the view of certain users so how can we create a view we can create a view by calling the create view operation so create view the name of the view as a certain query expression and then once a view is created you can actually utilize the name v for any other queries so for example we can create a view for the faculty without the salary so we can use this so create view faculty as select id name department from instructor so itong part na to is just the regular query maglalagbig ka lang ng create view name as the, the actual query and then you can use uh, the view from the first uh, expression and then you can actually utilize the name faculty to uh, refer to the whole query. Moreover, we can actually use the create view statement to rename the attribute names of the resulting view. So, for example, we have this particular query wherein we get the department name and then an aggregated value of the salary or the sum of the salary uh, since this is an aggregated version walang attribute name for the sum and salary but we can utilize the create view statement and pwede nating marename yung sum salary to total salary so hindi lang siya parang single string but we can we can actually assign names to each of the columns resulting from the query. Views can also be defined using other 
existing views. So suppose we have two views, V1 and V2. V1 is said to depend directly on a view relation V2 if V2 is used in the expression defining V1. And then sometimes, um, hindi lang two views yung involved but can have more views pa. So, may mga V sub i style in between. So, a view relation V sub i, V sub 1 is said to depend on view relation V2 if either directly, may direct Tinatawag niyo directly si V2 or there is a path of dependencies from V1 to V2. Also, a view relation is said to be uh, recursive if it depends on itself. So, this is an example of a view defined using other views. For this example, we have a view called physics for 2017 and then this view is created by calling this query itong select from where na medyo mahaba okay so we can create another view physics for 2017 what's on so this is another view which utilizes view na define natin kanina dito. Okay. So, we can say that physics for 2017 Watson is dependent directly on physics for 2017. We can also expand the view by replacing the name of the view by the actual query. So, instead of from physics for Pinalitan na ito ng actual content ni Physics for 2017 from our previous exam. Let's introduce the concept of materialized views. Certain database systems allow view relations to be physically stored. So, may physical copy created when the, the view is defined. So, yung mga ganong types ng views are called materialized views. The problem with this materialized views is that if relations used in the query are updated, so the problem ay magiging out of date yung na store mo na materialized view somewhere. What you need to do is to maintain the view by updating the view whenever the underlying relations are updated. Next topic is about transactions. Okay. So the transactions are sequence of query or update statements and is considered as a unit of work. The SQL standard specifies that the transaction begins implicitly when an SQL statement is, is executed. So the transaction must end with one of the following statements. So kailangan may uh, commit work na statement and then there is a list of operations na tawag na rollback work if one of the operations inside the transaction or the sequence of query ay nagfail so merong rollback just in case may isa na hindi naging successful so yung mga we say that a transaction is atomic if either fully executed or rolled back as if it never occurred. Music